Hello everyone, my name is Edmund and I am a student at profess in Professor Cliver's Digital Fundamentals class at RIT. Today I'll be going over the D flip-flop, what it's used for, how it works, and the different types of D flip-flops. Flip-flops are a useful type of digital device that can be used to store binary states and can be used as a sort of digital toggle switch. Flip-flops are built from primitive logic gates and can be easily built into chips. So this is preset, data, clock, and clear, and give us Q and Q0 for our outputs. I think the main difference between these two flip-flops are is, this, is a clock. In an asynchronous flip-flop, the flip-flop is mainly based on the clock's input, while in an asynchronous flip-flop, the clock is overridden by the inputs of set and reset. I'll explain more in just a second, but first I want to explain what a clock is. So, so the clock in a flip-flop is a sort of a synchronization tool. This helps to guide the other outputs in the circuit and acts kind of like a reference. So, and there's also two, there's, uh, two sides of a clock. There's rising edge and falling edge. And to show a rising edge, you would have a triangle in the schematic. To show a falling edge, you would add a bubble in front of the triangle. And what I mean by rising and falling edge is if you take a look at the timing diagram and you take a look at the clock pulses, when a pulse is high, the left side of the pulse of the clock is the rising edge. And the falling edge is the right side of the clock. So this line here is the rising edge and this line on the right side is the falling edge. So why this is important is we need to use the clock or we need to use at least one side of the edge to tell us what data we're or what point of the data we're using for our output. So like I said before, it kind of acts like a reference. So if we look at our rising edge clock and we trace down, the value of D is one. So that value will be held until the next rising edge. And if we look at this rising edge, trace down to data, data is zero. So that sets it to zero until the next rising edge. Data is one for this rising edge. Data is zero. We trace down for the next rising edge. And for the final rising edge, data is one. And notice how I didn't uh, have any output for the first 20 nanoseconds here because there's no uh, clock or rising trigger edge before this one there's no input so we don't know what the inputs are so this is how the timing diagram will look for a synchronous D flip-flop next we need to know we need to understand um, the difference between this and an asynchronous flip-flop. So in an asynchronous flip-flop, the clock is the clock input is overridden by the preset and clear inputs. So now we have four inputs and two outputs to take into account. So if we look at the truth table, we can what I mean by being overridden is when the values for preset and clear are different. Clock and data do not matter. Q will be set to either one or zero. So if we look into this example and look at the rising edge, so first we need to analyze the flip-flop. It is a rising edge clock, so we need to look on the left side of the pulse. And if we trace down to D, that's how we find our values. But first, a trick for asynchronous, um, for, to make timing diagrams for asynchronous flip-flops, is we should look at the spots where the values for preset and clear are different. So in this example, this first section of clear is zero, so if you look at the uh, truth table, Q will be set to zero, and this will go. This will be held up to the next rising edge over here. And this section over here, preset is low, while clear is one. Preset low, clear is one. That means Q is set to one. So this part you can just uh, initially set to one. And for the final part, the last rising edge, pre is 1, clear is 0. So this section is 
you can just automatically set that to zero. And then next, you fill out the spots where they're both the same, and that's when we have to look at data to fill uh, to find our Q value, Q output. So here, preset is one, clear is one. Wait, this value, yeah, preset is one, clear is one, data is uh, low, so that's a zero. So this just is stays zero and is held to the next rising edge. Data is one, and pre and clear are both one, so that sets it to a one to the next rising edge. These are all one, so again, it stays at uh, stays at one here. And then after this section, uh, data is low and pre and clear are high. So data low, high, Q is zero, so this is right, it drops back to zero. And then we look at the final uh, final rising edge. Data is low, pre and clear are high. Data low, so Q is zero. So it's Q is zero for this tiny section, and we have the section from before, so it just stays low into the for the rest of the timing diagram. So that's the main difference between asynchronous and synchronous flip-flops. Thank you for watching.